Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Just in here having coffee. Thought I would come have some coffee with you guys. And I'm recording on Zoom today for a couple of reasons. Um, mostly because I'm going to talk a little bit about human design today. And I think there's a there's probably people who are going to watch this video who are just like, I have no clue what you're even talking about. So I thought that I would share my screen. And that's something I can do on Zoom. So I thought I would share my screen and show you my body graph so that when I start talking about what I'm going to talk about today, it might make a little more sense to people who have no clue about human design. Those of you who know about human design will probably follow me very well. <laughs> so I was having a conversation with one of my friends this morning, one of my really good friends. I love you, Holly. And she was talking about um, an interaction that she was having with someone and how knowing her human design really helped her when the conversation became awkward, uncomfortable. That happens for all of us, right? And it was knowing her human design that helped her stay engaged, know what was hers and know what wasn't hers. And I say this often, I'm like, absolutely, hands down, knowing my human design has changed my life. It changes how I interact with people. It, 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 it lets me know what's mine. Like how many times are we in an interaction with someone in our lives? It goes sideways quick, right? We've said something, it's been taken wrong. We're not understanding why it's been taken wrong. And or our body is just flooded with things that feels really foreign, makes us feel really weird. And so we start acting weird and we're like, I don't know what happens when I start having these conversations. Well, I think some of it is we just don't know how we're designed. We don't know what energy is ours and what energy is the other person. And human design shows you the mechanics of who you are, the mechanics of how you operate, how you move through this world, what energy is yours and what energy is just coming into your body for you to have wisdom or intuition about the person you're connecting with. So let me, let me share my screen here real quick. Share your screen. Here. And so this is my body graph. This here is the head center. And you'll notice there's no color in this box right? Because my head center is undefined. That means that the thoughts that pass through my mind are just in the environment around me. So, and how many of us are like, I just had this thought, it's my thought. And then we're judging ourselves or we're confused or we're like, why am I thinking this? What kind of person am I? Maybe they're not your thoughts. Maybe they're just in the environment and you're picking it up. Right. So and then this is the Ajna center. This is our center for processing. This is how we process the thoughts that we have and or the experiences that we have. So this is my energy. See, it's colored in. And so the way that I process things is my process. Right. And I do that with the energy of this gate four, which is all about forgiveness. So when I'm processing an experience, I'm processing it. When I'm in the high side of how I am to operate, I'm processing it from a place of what can I forgive? What can I have a higher view of so that um, I'm not building resentments, right? And so you find out what your energy, well, my energy is of forgiveness. And this energy is about forgiving the errant child. So it's like forgiving people, forgiving, 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 whether they deserve it or not, which is somewhere we can get really stuck. It's like, why would I forgive them? Right? Well, I've gone so far down the forgiveness um, rabbit hole because it's in my energy. It's in my processing, how I process things that I've gotten to this place. There's nothing to forgive, which is going to seem really bizarre to people. But it's like, we're not doing anything of malicious intent. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not some kind of injury or whatever for me to process personally within myself, but to make somebody else wrong because it affected me in a way that didn't feel good is not how I operate anymore. 
So that's one example of how getting really familiar with your own energy can can bring you to this place of operating in a way that's really going to serve you. And this forgiving people has served me so much. The other way that I process is this channel right here. This is also how I speak. This is the, the throat center. And so this is my energy. I speak out of this 35, which is all about change. I remember. I speak out of this 45, which is all about community and heterarchy. There's no hierarchy. And I speak out of this eighth gate, which is all about others. So I can really express others' experiences. The 1762 channel is all about organization. So my thoughts are very organized. This is the gate of details here and the gate of opinions. And when they come together, I can be very organized in the way that I express. Well, this is the most, this is a very interesting thing that I found out when I first came into human design about this particular channel. So if you notice this box, this brown box right here, only has a connection to this green one right here, this upside down triangle. You see that? See the line is connecting this box to that box? Well, that means what I speak is coming from my head. So I need an invitation to share what I think. This is what's really fascinating. And so my mind, my processing center can just be like, -da 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 -da. this is good advice and just give it. But since I need permission to share what I think, because when someone asks me what I think, it creates an opening inside of them to hear what I think. But when I don't get an invitation to speak, to share what I think, and I just share it, the other person receives me as toxic. How many people who are watching this right now have been giving good advice or what they thought was good advice and the response that they got from the other person was like, who asked you? And you're thinking in your head, well, you're talking to me about your problem. Aren't you asking me? No, they're not. Sometimes they're just expressing. These are things that I learned when I came into human design. And so now I wait for that invitation to share what I think. And several things happen during that waiting. One, I get way more information from the other person because they're still talking. Now, information going into my processing center, getting processed can change as I get more information, right? So the longer I wait for that invitation, the more information and wisdom I gain. Sometimes I never get the invitation to share what I think, right? But the connection with that person from the other side is experienced as me listening and holding space, which is exactly what I'm doing. It doesn't mean that I'm not experiencing pressure inside of myself. I'm like, I want to share this. I know this great thing. I really, really, really want to share it. But I don't do that now. And so people feel seen by me. They feel supported by me. And they know that when they do want to ask my opinion, that I'm going to drop some kind of bomb of wisdom on them. And I know that when I share, they're going to listen. Why? Because they asked. And so it's alleviated so many misunderstandings between me and other people. My intentions were pure when I was sharing before, but it wasn't received and I was judged for it. Why? Because I wasn't operating the way I'm mechanically designed to operate. And so I was having all kinds of arguments and disagreements and being seen as somebody I wasn't being because I wasn't operating the way I was designed. And now that I am, it has just changed things. It's changed so many things. So that's one example of like knowing, like when my friend was saying, like knowing what's yours and what isn't yours and how to operate inside of it. If I can stay nice and quiet and wait for the invitation and just receive everything they're saying and wait for the invitation when the invitation is given. It's just, it's incredible. I feel really good because I was received. The other person feels really good because they've got something to take away now. And when I don't share, there's not this big disagreement and misunderstanding. So that's one thing about human design that can really, and some people are undefined here. So some people's throat is white, like my head is. These people, when they come into connection with me, they're using my throat energy. So they're going to talk like Arlene. And there's tons of couples that I know who have issues because 
one person's throat's open and the other person's throat's defined, this person over here is using this person's energy and this person's upset that they're being talked to the way they are. And so I tell the defined throat over here that they literally need to check their own energy before they engage in a conversation because this person is speaking your energy to you. They're using your throat, the energy of your throat, what's inside your throat to speak to you. And you're not liking it, but it's yours. It's being reflected to you. So this is, and that's what happens in the whole human design chart. When you come down here to this box right here, this is this is the emotional solar plex center of the body graph. This is where all the emotions and everything are. And I'm undefined here which means I experience emotions, but they're not mine. And there's been so many times in my life where I've been trying to learn how to process these emotions. And I've judged myself for being emotional because there's an energy that comes into my body that's not mine, that completely confuses me, that I'm attaching to and been making a story up about that when I came into human design, I'm like, oh, I just have to let it go. Yep, not mine not mine. And I say that. And that's how I find out what's mine and what's not mine. When I have this weird, like crazy energy rush into my body and it's very unfamiliar and it's very sudden, that's the first thing I whisper under my breath, not mine. And then I feel the inside of my body again. And I'm like, did it leave? Did some of it stay? And if some of it stays, then I'm like, oh, this is mine. Let's go be with this and see what it is. Right? But this center here was huge because the not self of this center, which means we're operating in an exact opposite way of how benefits us, is avoiding confrontation and truth. Why do the emotionally undefined and emotionally open? The difference between those two is this. I'm undefined because I have this number six right here, which is kind of like a file folder for this center. So I have a little bit of understanding about what happens in this center. And so when someone's emotional energy comes into my body, I amplify it by 10%. Like I turn it up by 10%, reflect it back to the person. And if the person I'm connecting with knows their human design, knows they're emotionally defined, then they're going to be like, oh, thanks for showing me where I'm at. But the majority of people that I connect with don't know their human design. And so they judge me as being emotional because I just had this emotional response. That's what? bigger than theirs because I amplified it. And this is where you can get really like tangled up in stuff, you know? And so like, I could be like reflecting an emotional response back to someone and they're like, God, you're so emotional. And now what am I doing? I'm like, I am, what's wrong with me? So much of just that changed when I came into human design. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. It gives you your authority. My authority is the sacral right here. So I know how to make a decision in my life. I totally know how to make a decision. I don't ask other people what they think I should do. I mean, I do talk to other people about what I'm thinking I'm going to do. And they reflect stuff to me, which gives me more information, which ultimately sometimes does affect the decision that I make. But I'm very confident in the decisions that I make and what's good for me because I live according to my design and I make decisions based on my authority, which is sacral which is yes or no questions. And my body will make a noise. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Or uh -uh. Or my body will feel pulled towards something or repelled by it. Right? So there's, it's a really in-depth system, but I'll show you the rest of the centers. I don't ever want these videos to be very long. So we're going to kind of touch and go on this. If any of this interests you guys whatsoever, just like totally like what you know about your human design, what you don't know, what you're intrigued by, all of that, just leave it in the comments because this is my one of my favorite topics to talk on. So we'll just we can go back and forth in the comment section all day long. And if anybody wants to book a call with me um, to to find out their human design, um, I can drop my Calalindy link in the um, in the description box too. And so you can book a call with me, but I, I can just talk about this stuff all day. So you guys can just be in the comments section too, if you want, I don't care. This is my favorite, one of my favorite subjects. So anyway, this center right here is called the G center. This is the center for identity, direction, love. 
surprising, right? You would think that the love was in the feelings or in the heart. This is the heart over here. No, it's the G center. And so I have my own identity, my own direction. I've got the gate of self-love. I've got the gate of the love of humanity. I got the love of the body. (laughs) I got the ability to support, you know, leadership roles and be a leader. All is so yummy right here. This is the spleen. So the spleen is all about well-being, health, intuition, that kind of stuff. And this is the sacral. So this box right here, 70% 70 of the population has this center right here defined. And this is the center that makes you an energy being, right? You have the life force energy inside of you. These types are a generator type. I am a pure generator. There's also manifesting generators, right? And the one thing we have in common is this center right here is defined. Yep. Pretty much the only thing we have in common, honestly. (laughs) And that's what I love about human design. This is the science of differentiation. This is where we're different. And we live in a world where they want to homogenize all of us and make us all the same. And we're not. This is an eight billion piece puzzle. And we all have our own unique puzzle piece in it. This isn't a competition. We're here to work together. I bring stuff like this gate right here is called the gate of beginnings. Like you, people who have this energy can start stuff. Are you one of those people who can like start things, but you can never finish it? That's because this gate over here is the finishing gate. Well, I don't have that. <laughs> but I know people who do. And so I connect with them. I'm like, hey, I started this project about ready to put the finishing touches on it. You got some time? You want to hang out with me while I do this? Because we're here to work together. And that's what this does. And so while I'm finishing something, this person's experiencing my energy of starting something and they're starting something. Just like I have this gate nine over here. This gate, I've given readings to so many people who have this gate right here and they're like, I'm ADHD. I don't know if you are because I'm not a doctor. I don't really believe in a lot of those labels and all that other stuff. I feel like people put on things now. If that's how you believe, that's beautiful. I love that you know how you believe. I know how I believe. And that's the beauty of the way I live my life now is I get to believe what I believe. You get to believe what you believe. And if we believe the same thing and you want to hang out together, talk about it. That's great. And if you don't, there's 8 billion people on this planet. We all have our own little places that we're going to really resonate and places that we're not. And I don't get upset when someone doesn't resonate with me anymore because I'm like, I ain't got time for all 8 billion people on this planet anyway. So I don't even take it personal. (laughs) Just like, thank you. I'm seeing you gave me space. (laughs) So, but with this ninth gate, it's, it's, we know everything that we know all the details of everything that needs to be focused on, but we don't have this 52 over here, which is the gate of stillness that allows us to be still enough to focus on all the many details inside of us. Right. And so it's like so much understanding and awareness, so much understanding and awareness for me personally, like just becoming aware of my design and how to operate you know, how to use the mechanics of my energy to serve me in my life has removed probably 50 to 60 percent of the beliefs about healing that I needed to do. I thought I was broken because I was different. I thought I was malfunctioning. I thought that I couldn't really see me. I thought all of these things that I was just like, nope, that's not what it is. I'm just different. And so are you, and so is she, and so is he, and so are they. We're all different, and that's the beauty. We get to bring our differences to each other. We also get to know what's ours. Like, I know when I look at my chart that I am the majority of the energy that's in the room. Hands down, the majority. I have a lot of energy when I come in a room. There's nine centers, and I have six of them defined. So 60% of what's going on inside of our lane is our lane. Some people only have one or two of these centers defined. And so only 20% of their experience is truly them. That that other 80% is the world coming into them. And it can be so confusing 
because you think what's inside of you is you. But when I came to human design, it's like, no, it's all energy. It's all been energy. So like if you're someone who only has like, you know, say the throat and the G center, this one and this one, those are your only two centers. You're not going to have a lot of energy to be doing a lot of stuff. This is a motor. This is a motor. This is a motor. And this is a motor. If you don't have any of these four motors, you're not going to have a lot of energy to do stuff unless you're in connection with people who have energy. And so we label people as lazy and all this other stuff, you know, and everybody's like, know yourself. Well, I didn't know me until I came into human design. And now I feel like I know me. I love it. So that's probably enough today. Did you got can you guys tell how much I love this? I'm just like <laughs> so anyway, um comment below as much as you want, like what you learned, what you want to learn, what you already know, what was fascinating, what you have questions about. I will come in here and answer your questions. Absolutely. So comment away. I love you guys. Thanks for watching.